back, relax, maybe get yourself a snack. Me and you gonna have a little chat about books. Hi guys, so I am here today to do some book reviews. I have two books that are very different but are both quite interesting so I'm going to discuss both in this video. We'll start with the one that I gave the lowest rating to and that is Pandora Star by Peter F. Hamilton. Now this was my first foray into Peter F. Hamilton's work. It is the first one in his Commonwealth saga and I believe it's the first one in a duology. I wanted to love this. I so wanted to love this because I know that Peter F. Hamilton is hugely revered by loads of people. They all admire his work greatly. They think he is an excellent science fiction author. He's written an absolute ton of books and they're all absolutely huge, ginormous, great big hefty chunky books. So if I had liked this I would have had so much exciting stuff ahead of me to discover and enjoy and be a part of. Unfortunately I didn't like this book very much and I struggled with this one so much and that was tough, that was hard because I did this as a buddy read with lots of people. Um, I read it with Jo and Michael and Rachel and Joe finished it and Joe loved this and I knew that he kind of would because he's read other Hamilton works and enjoyed them a lot. But I didn't like this and I had so many kind of issues with it. This is a great science fiction epic. It is set in this universe where the Commonwealth has been established. Humans and alien races live in harmony and they get along and we have all sorts of new technologies that are really, really interesting such as the idea of rejuvenation, which basically means if you have the money every couple of decades when your body is feeling a little bit tired, you can upload your memories onto this special device that will store them for you, get a new body and then implant the memories into that body and you can basically live again. You can be born and extend your life for centuries, essentially, an unlimited amount of time. And this is very common practice in this galaxy. It's something that people do fairly regularly, it's something that's done on most of the planet and it's not unheard of or anything like that. I love that idea, I thought that was really great, really crazy, really fun and definitely gave the potential for some really wise old characters to come in and it definitely did. Um, Peter F. Hamilton has some characters who are centuries old, have a whole wealth of knowledge that they can pull out at any one second and that was really interesting, I really liked that element. This focuses mainly on this storyline surrounding this big barrier that has been discovered in space. There's a ginormous barrier that is enclosing something and the people within the Commonwealth don't know what it is. They don't understand what it is. They don't know what it is. And they want to know what it is because we're humans. We like to investigate things. We like to find things out. and We don't like mysteries. So they decide that they are going to command a ship to go and fly out to where this big barrier has been discovered and hopefully report back and see if they can find out what it is enclosing and whether it's something that's hostile or whether it's something that is friendly and what they can do about it. Of course this mission doesn't go quite right and the barrier when they get there ends up rather different from what they expected and they get into a bit of a conundrum problem that just escalates and escalates. That's the main storyline, however there are so many sub storylines that are happening within this. This is a multiple POV book and we have a ton of different characters who we are following. It's quite hard to keep track of all of them. I read a lot of fantasy that has multiple POV and I love it and I find it very easy to keep track of a lot of the fantasy POVs that I've read. Great epic volumes doesn't faze me too much. For some reason adult science fiction, especially hard science fiction like this, really I find it so much more difficult. I find it so much harder to keep track of who is who, what they are doing, what company they work for, what planet they're on, what part of a space they're in, what machinery they understand, what their job role is. I just find it a lot harder to keep track of all of those things whereas in fantasy you don't usually have to understand everything and I feel like science fiction I want to understand everything because it should be understandable because it should be scientific. Maybe that's just me and I just have a complex um, about science fiction and understanding it but I find it a lot harder when I don't understand science fiction than when I don't understand fantasy so multiple POV within science fiction is always something I struggle with a lot more than within fantasy. However I do think that this book has some good POVs that I did really enjoy 
the main one being the storyline following Ozzy and Orion. Ozzy is the oldest guy in, in the universe, essentially. He has had many, many, many rebirths, rejuvenations, and he has many, many years of history that he can pull on. And he's been on all sorts of adventures all over the place. He's a very well-known name. And we follow him as he decides that he is going to go and try and find the self in paths, which basically they are a race of aliens who have this sort of wormhole path thing that leads you through all sorts of places and people get lost on the paths and it's all very mysterious, it's all very weird. Kind of has a magical vibe to it, but obviously it is a science fiction world, so we don't necessarily know how the science works, but we know it is science-y. So for me, that one worked really well. And along the way, Ozzy is accompanied by a young boy called Orion who kind of tags along, even though Ozzy doesn't want him there. And both of them go on this adventure through the paths. Now that storyline was my favourite by far. I was instantly interested in what was happening. I loved the alien race that we connected with and that we were talking to. I thought they were really, really, really fascinating, very developed, very comprehensive and very cool and mysterious. That was the only storyline that I really connected with. All the other characters felt like they didn't really work as well as I would have liked. This storyline felt quite separate from all the others. It felt like it was its own story happening in tandem, but it wasn't necessarily reflecting back on the main one too much. Whereas most of the other characters are involved in the main storyline of this barrier and somehow they're connected to other people within this story. I didn't feel like this one was as connected and maybe that's how I kept it more separate in my mind and was able to focus on that one more. I don't really know, but it's possible. What I would say about Peter F. Hamilton is don't go into this lightly. Don't go into this expecting it to be a breeze. Obviously, it's a huge book anyway. It's like over 1,100 pages, so it was never going to be a breeze. But it's not only that, it's also multiple POV. It's also got quite complicated science. It's also spread out across a huge galaxy and solar system and loads of planets and stars and space stations and all sorts of things. And a whole cast of characters who are all very different, some of which have been rejuvenated, some of which haven't, some of which are in their first life, some of which are in their hundredth. And also there's just technology beyond technology and alien races. There's a lot to comprehend. If you guys have heard me talk about Malazan, you know that the Malazan series is one that I find complicated and I do think is hard to get into. This is a lot harder than Malazan for me and I found this one really took brain power to connect with and understand what was happening and I found it a real struggle and I didn't feel like it was escapism and I think for me the reason I read is escapism. I read it for fun. I want to be educated and I want to get a story but the main thing is it's escapism. It's fun. That's why I do the reading I do and this didn't feel like fun. This felt like a challenge which I wanted to meet and I did because I finished it but oh man it was hard. <laughs> it was a challenge that I rose to but a challenge that I'm not sure was worth it. It's 1,100 pages and I feel like the story that was told within this could have been cut to 300 if we had just got rid of some of the point of view characters and also got rid of some of the overly complicated science fiction technology. I know that some people are gonna adore this and love this. If you like hard science fiction you probably will really enjoy this. I don't particularly like it and this was maybe me jumping in at the deep end and not really being able to take it all in. Maybe if I'd tried this after I'd tried more science fiction, it would have worked. It didn't work as well as I was hoping for. So unfortunately, much as I do think that this had a lot of cool ideas, a lot of great potential, it never really kind of got to a point where I felt like it was at that level in all areas. There was always something that was really boring going on at the same time as something that was really exciting. And I never felt like I was fully invested except in Ozzy and Orion's storyline. That was the only one where I kind of cared even a little bit about the characters. The rest of the time, I didn't really care what happened to the rest of the characters. They didn't bother me because I, I wasn't connected to them. Alongside Ozzy and Orion, some of the other characters that I did think were at least noteworthy and I paid attention to were Wilson Kime, who is the captain of the starship that goes and investigates the barrier, Morning Light Mountain, who is one character of extremely odd tendencies, very cool way of talking and quite a intellectual being, kind of alienish, very cool, liked him a lot. We also have Paula who is a detective, she's kind of investigating a case as this story goes on 
and we have Melanie who is a young lady kind of in the world on her own trying to figure out what to do with her life and she gets into some difficulties and we've got lots of other people as well but I must say those are the only ones that even vaguely interested me in some way and a lot of them had boring moments. The only ones that I found continually interesting were Morning Light Mountain, Ozzy and Orion. If this had been cut, if it had less POVs and was less complicated maybe I would have given this quite a high rating. As it stands, I gave this a 2 out of 5 stars. It was okay, it was readable, but I don't think I got all of it and I do think it was a real challenge for me to get through, so I'm not sure I'm going to continue this series and I'm not sure I'm going to pick up any more Peter F. Hamilton, I must say. This was tough. Maybe if he does some short fiction, like novella-length fiction, maybe I'll read that because I feel like he has good ideas but the extra page length was so intense and it was such a long journey to get through this. So uh, yeah, I don't think I'll be picking up any more in this series for quite a while. But let me know your thoughts down below. If you have read this series and you think it gets better, or if you think you have some advice on how to take it all in and keep it all straight in your head, let me know, because I don't really know what I'm doing with this series and I think it's a tough one to get. So let me know your thoughts on this one. The next one I have to talk to you guys about is The Traitor or The Traitor Brew Cormorant if you're in the US and this is by Seth Dickinson. This story I was hoping to love and definitely wanted to love but I was unsure going into it whether I would or not because I had heard mixed things and I know that it's quite a divisive story. I actually ended up falling quite in the middle with this I really enjoyed the character of Baru as a young child, which we meet right in the beginning. She comes from an island where it's not really inhabited by civilization yet. She comes from a small sort of tribal island where she has two fathers and one mother, and that's quite normal, that's perfectly accepted on the island. And she's had a happy childhood growing up with sometimes tourists coming and visiting, but nothing too stressful or anything like that. As time goes on, she becomes a very inquisitive child, she becomes a very quirky child, she has thoughts and ideas and she's a very intelligent one and people start to notice that, particularly the strangers who keep coming to her island as tourists and trading with the people who live there, start to notice and take an interest in her and when they finally decide that they are going to invade and take over the customs and culture there and change it to what they want it to be, they take Baru away and educate her and turn her into a product of themselves. Now, I loved the first section of this. I thought that when Baru was on the island, she was fantastic. She was a quirky character. She had a lot of vivacity, a lot of life, a lot of vibrance. And I really liked seeing her as a young child running around and being inquisitive and being excited about everything and anything. Unfortunately, I do think she lost some of that as the story went on and when she moved away from the island, it became very focused on economics and accounting, which isn't something I particularly have an interest in or know an awful lot about. So that lost my concentration a bit. And Baru as a character sort of changed. She became someone a lot harder. She became someone a lot more, a lot less exciting, I guess. And she didn't really capture my attention as much. And the middle section of the book was quite dull. We also have a lot of invasions going on at the time, a lot of sort of protesting, invasions, campaigns, war, that sort of thing is constantly happening. Some of it due to Baru, some of it due to other stuff outside of her control. And for me, campaigns are not really something that interests me. I don't have a particular fascination for that sort of thing. And I do find it can get a bit stagnant and a bit boring after a while. And I do think that, that is what happened with this book a bit. As we got into the final third, I think things started to pick up again. And Baru as a character started to become more interesting. I found that her storyline picked up and she started to do things of her own initiative again rather than doing just what she thought she should do. She actually took some initiative herself and and did things that weren't necessarily expected, or I didn't expect them. And I think the ending of this book was very good. However, this sort of slow middle section that just plodded along and was quite boring really drew the score of this down for me, and I couldn't bring it back up again entirely just based off of the ending. The beginning and the ending of this really did hook me in. I liked them a lot. I thought both were exciting and had some great twists and were showcasing Baru as a great character, whereas the middle section I felt like she lost her way a bit, and I think that's intentional, but I do think it suffered because of it, and I don't think it really connected with me, and I don't think that I really found her as a character, someone to be 
looked up to or sympathise with because of the decisions she made. I think she made some decisions that really didn't help her and were silly and I didn't think that she should have done them. And I found it hard to completely emotionally connect with someone who did stuff that I know I wouldn't have done in that situation. And yeah, I just found it hard to connect with the, the middle section, Baru, shall we say. Whereas the ending and the start, I can kind of understand both of her perspectives and who she was in that moment. So I think this is a fun one. I think if you like politics and if you like economics, then you're probably going to enjoy this, particularly if you like campaigns as well, then you'll probably enjoy this more than I did. If you then want something that's an adventure story or a story of revenge, then this does have elements of that, but it's not entirely that, which I think it's been marketed to be. It's been marketed as a revenge quest. And although it has elements of it, I think it's a very slow very long lasting revenge quest that doesn't actually come to fruition for a very long time and goes in some weird directions that were quite slow and quite dull for me personally but like I say some people love this some people hate it and I fall kind of in the middle I gave this a three out of five stars I think it's likable I think there's a good beginning and a good end but the middle really dragged it down so I'd love to hear your thoughts on this and on Baru as a character and what she does if you have read this so leave me some comments below. So those are my two reviews for Pandora's Star and also for The Traitor Baru or The Traitor. Let me know down below if you guys have read either of these and what you thought of them. If you have, which one did you like more? Or if you haven't read them or you've read anything similar, then you can let me know down below whether you plan to pick it up or if you have any recommendations of things you think I might like more than these two. Thank you all for watching. I will see you all again soon in another video. Bye! Thank you for watching my video today Go pick up a book, then come back and chat with me again